<sighs> Are you sure you want to hear that story again, my lad? You've heard it so many times already that you can tell it yourself forward, backward, and sideways. Darling, it's his favorite. All right, all right. Once, there was a land ruled by two tribes. One kept to the forest, living in harmony with nature. The other built their own shelters from the bounty offered by the forest. Yes, but despite these dark differences, the two tribes were at peace with one another, sharing their knowledge and coming to each other's aid. But there was one unspoken rule between them. In matters of love and matrimony, they would keep to their own. For most, this was easy to follow, and for many years there was peace. But then one fateful day, the daughter of the king of the forest beheld a handsome warrior from the other tribe and fell in love with him. When at last she revealed herself to him, he could not resist her. They could tell no one of their passion. And when the princess began to show signs of carrying a child, she fled her father's court without a word. The forest king was inconsolable, searching the land far and wide for his missing daughter. The warrior had promised to meet his lover by the dying yew, where they had first consummated their love, but he mistook the location. Never again would they meet. Heartbroken, the princess took shelter at one of the other tribe's temples. Here, she gave birth to a son who carried the pointed ears and sharp eyes of his mother's people and the earthy complexion and strong features of his father's. But his mother bore him with a broken heart, and she died when he was but three summers. The boy grew in the care of the temple priest, who was kind to him, but did not understand the traditions of his mother's people. In time, the boy became a man and sought to learn of the world. He set out to seek his fortune, like any good young man. But he found the world outside the temple at war. The forest king, in his grief, had gone mad and shattered the peace between the tribes. And so, into this broken world came the young man, a product of the two tribes. And he learned to hate them both. Goodness, are you all right? Oh dear, you've taken quite the tumble. Here, let me help you. Oh, I... I suppose you do need something of an explanation. You're in the home of Father Alexander, priest of Danae, goddess of mercy. I'm Mylene, keeper of the shrine. Um... We found you unconscious and naked on the temple grounds early this morning, so we brought you in here and set you up in a spare bed. You are wearing one of his nightshirts. It is interesting that you're the same size as him. Huh? Or the voices? I'm afraid I do not understand. It is only you and I in this abode. 
Father Alexander is out making his rounds, but he shall return shortly. Is there anything you need of me? You must be famished. <sighs> I assure you, it is quite safe here. Although it is fortunate you did not... Oh, do forgive me. Clearly, you had quite a fright already. I need not trouble your heart with harrowing stories. But come, let me set a place at the table for you. I hope you don't mind porridge. We have a simple taste. Those who serve Danae seldom eat meat, if ever. Uh, cold, plain porridge is just what you need, you say? Very well. Here you go. Why are you eating so quickly? You could... I... hope it was satisfactory. Ah, Mylene! I see our visitor is awake! Good morning, Father Alexander. This is... Uh, oh my, I never asked for your name. Oh, no harm done, child. I'm certain our new friend can introduce himself. Ah, uh, perhaps you are still adjusting from shock. Quite understandable, quite understandable. Come, shall we see to your need for fresh garments? Come now, stranger. We must insist. It is our sworn duty as servants of Danae to shelter the destitute, feed the hungry, and clothe the... naked. Quite all right, my lady. We all came to this world, see. Mother Danae, your servant presents an offer of spring water. It is with this offering that I... Oh, you... you startled me. I... I hope you don't find me inattentive, stranger. I was merely praying for protection from the Beast of the Hollow. Are you... not familiar with that story? It is an old story, first told centuries ago during the War of the Masters. Perhaps the forest folk know it by a different name? I see. <clears throat> I know most think of it as an allegory on the cruelty of war, but with these stories of mysterious monster attacks making the rounds, I cannot help but... Yes, that is exactly how it feels. It all sounds so familiar. But I must not fret over such things. People come to Danae for safety. I must not put forth a face of dread. Oh, 
I... I do not mean to bore you, sir. Please excuse me. Such a long trek. All the way from Jorgenville. I will say that town falls well outside my parish. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. There was no shortage of interesting things to happen out there. Yeah. There are so many tales we could tell just about this elven friend of ours. He went off on his own, though. Elven, you say? Oh, just the fellow I was thinking of. Will he join us? Jim? 